This time on the Coal Iron Collaborative, I fly to Colorado to begin forging an epic Tolkien-inspired sword with some good friends. That sword being Ringgill, the blade wielded by the legendary elven king Fingolfin, as told by Tolkien in his book The Silmarillion. King Fingolfin ruled in the first age of Middle-earth and was famed for facing the Dark Lord Morgoth in combat, armed with his shield and his sword that was said to glitter like ice. Tolkien is beloved for writing amazing stories like these, but along with being an incredible writer, he was also a visionary painter and illustrator. One subject he loved to illustrate the most were heraldic devices of different characters and groups. And of course, one such symbol was that of Fingolfin's house, which sparked the project that we were setting out to take on at the forge. As soon as I landed in Colorado and was picked up by my friend Matt Waters, we were instantly off to the races with new ideas and inspiration. Matt has always been a true friend and colleague in the craft for decades, and has become one of the most hardworking, skilled smiths in the game. Crafting true functional works of art, Matt specializes in Mosaic Damascus, which he'll be putting to work and incorporating in the Blade of Ringo. Ben Bannister is an incredibly gifted bladesmith and may look familiar to many of you as he was one of the co-inventors of the now famous 3D print Damascus method, discovered and pioneered in collaboration with the legendary Steve Schwarzer, Ben himself, Kyrie Schrotland, and Ron Hardman, owner of Kilroy's workshop where Ben serves as shop manager. This 3D print method of making mosaic Damascus is revolutionary and still very new. And before I arrived at Kilroy's, Ben applied his skills to printing the template for forging Fingolfin's epic emblem in steel for the sword. So we were ready to attack this project with ferocity and a lot of professionalism, and made time to plan our project on a quiet Sunday when no one else was working at Kilroy's workshop. The calm before the storm of students and anvils ringing was the perfect space for us to dive deep into Professor Tolkien's lore, and being surrounded by history of the school at Kilroy's made it all the easier for us to be inspired and make a clear blueprint of how we would forge this icy sword symbol to life in fire and steel. So, there they are. Super beautiful. Okay, so, yeah, we landed on this because, I don't know why, I just love the idea of the guard being integral to the blade. And then in terms of the pattern, obviously the mosaic here and then maybe smaller, repeated, and those could be, you know, trapped in even just like blade-worthy mono steel. It doesn't have to be pattern welded in here. The, the penciled line could be like, you know, thin nickel, like a, like a pop of, of bright nickel, delineating the cutting edges being a really dense, kind of like frost-looking mosaic, you know, or uh, some kind of a crushed W high-density pattern. But yeah, Ringgill's described as like glittering like ice. I think that's all he describes yeah. it as. So I like that. I like the idea of you making the pattern welding all spectacular, grinding it, heat treating it. And then what I wanted to do is like frost on windows and I could like engrave like real delicate frost patterns like into the, the guard and the, and the pommel. Oh, that's, so sweet. <laughs> um, that's as long as that other sword was, like 31 inches. Yeah, I love wide I do too. bases on swords. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, four inches. But again, this is integral, so, you know, it would yeah. just flow cleanly into that. So that might be like an inch and three quarter. Inch and three quarter. Yeah. And then in terms of thickness, you know, tapering both in width and thickness, like, yeah. I mean, three sixteenths ish, you know, like yeah. a rough, doesn't have to be crazy crisp, uh, diamond cross section. I, I don't know. I really like this design. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to call Steve Schwarzer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You can always work this one down too and have yeah, yeah, that's not tested because we would want to see if there's any pattern distortion mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So this is the Ringgill, wait, Fingolfin? Fingolfin, Fingolfin that Fingolfin is. Fingolfin symbol. That is this. that. The sword is, is named Ringgill. And then, and then this is the blue gemstone. What if these, mat well, maybe not gemstones, but these weren't repeats of the symbol? They were two different things with the same shape. Sure. I mean, they could. I guess that would involve you guys printing more, right? Yeah. Yeah. We could do some legendarium searching to see what other kind of symbols yeah. would befit Engulfin's sword. So, I don't know. I'm down for whatever. I think this is some modern artist took his doodles, and these are all the different houses. So yeah, Fingolfin, Finarfin, Feanor. Originally, I was liking, I thought this would be a little bit more, I mean, this would have been more simple. I, I love the character of Arendil. 
yeah. But I feel like he wasn't described as having a sword. I didn't feel like there was enough literal stuff to go off of. Whereas Fingolfin is described as having a sword, so. Oh, that's yeah. that's cool. Fingolfin was the strongest, the most steadfast, and the most valiant. Yeah, he's kind of like a, he, he really is kind of a Christ figure in a sense. Well, and he fights Morgoth and yeah. like, he wounds him and he limps, and Morgoth limps For, the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. freaking cool. Everything is cinematic if it's leading up to forging a ring gill, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, oh, I for sure will. What he would look like. Yeah. This is our welding shot. Okay. So this is just welding on the, the bottom plate. Yeah, just the bottom. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Question is spray painting the inside white, right? Yeah. I think we're gonna do that. Steve taught us to do it that way. I think that's listen to Steve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. To and Steve. for anybody who doesn't know, the white spray paint on the inside method is it's got aluminum titanium di ti dioxide, titanium so, dioxide it, which will prevent the inside pattern from welding to the mild steel walls, correct? Yep. Yes. So we'll be able to hopefully just peel the can right off. Awesome. Beautiful. For extra precaution, take forever, but you could white out the sides of that thing. No, that is an interesting part. White out all around it. I would fit it in there. Okay. Is this, do you just squish it in first and then add the uh, powder? Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna slide it into the can and then I'll add the powder, pack that down yeah. pretty dang tight. And then the idea is because this PLA is mostly cornstarch, that carbon integrates itself into the steel and then the coloring of the PLA burns out. And you'll see that when we put that in the forge, you kind of get a little bit of a fireworks show. Awesome. Um, and that's that plastic burning out. And then I'll do some presses and it should all Old form and Beautiful. should get that guy in the end. Beautiful. Hopefully. <laughs> Just like that. Nice. Nice and flush. It's a little lower than uh, the top of the can, but that's not too big of a deal. Yeah, that's probably ideal, actually. You probably want it lower because yep. with that first initial squish, we don't want it to break the PLA. Exactly. So yep. that looks awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah. So the 3D print serves as walls of the design that delineate between different types of powdered steel, which result in different contrasting colors and textures in the finished solid mosaic billet, if successfully forged. But a lot has to go right for that to work. This may not look like elven epic smithcraft, but this prep work is crucial, as it's where a ton of the magic happens, and Ben needs to carefully pour the powdered steel into its proper places. And what better elven tool to use than a party hat that looks like it was used for Feanor's birthday? Why don't you just let me handle the Tolkien references? Okay, dumb jock. Sorry, Dwight. Anyway, Ben has this tedious job, which he does with great skill. And I send a quick message to my son, letting him know that I found Mjolnir, and we then sent Ben on his merry way home to deal with the remaining powdered steel, which we placed in disposable coffee cups, naturally. The following day, I teach a sword making class at Kilroy's, which was incredibly fun. But forging the emblem is soon to begin. At last, Ben is ready to work his magic in forging Fingolfin's symbol to life. He starts by creating a small divot hole this allows for some of the vapors and specifically the plastic PLA to burn out. Ben intentionally places it on the edge of the forge and leaves it there for a good long while to allow the PLA plastic to burn completely out. This process cannot be rushed, though there's plenty of time for banter in between heats, but it's essential to let all of the PLA burn out, which you can see there, And when Ben knows that it's up to the proper heat, he carefully brings it over to the Coal Ironworks 25 ton press and gives it one solid squish straight down onto the piece to ensure that we've compressed that canister as best as possible. That first squish on the press is extremely important. So to set the weld, but of course not to go too aggressively and break or distort your pattern too much. He then quickly welds on a handle to make it easier to work from different angles. And we're back to the fire and forging.
Yes! We gotta get this bad boy. Yeah, that one. <laughs> okay, you ready? That looks so good. That's exciting. I love it. It works. Yeah. I can't works. believe it works so good. Oh, no. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and here is the final finished forged emblem made out of solid mosaic Damascus, and we could not be happier with it. Now this, as a proof of concept, is just a first test in many, and the final result in the blade itself will be 10 times more spectacular, and I cannot wait to see it. All right, guys, that was, I would call, a success. That was freaking awesome. Ben, thank you for not only being one of the co-pioneers of this mad scientist uh, new method of mosaic Damascus, but also forging this. It came out so clean. It's like yeah. pretty much exactly the, the image. Yeah. And then we're going to pass it off to the man who can't stop laughing. <laughs> and then he is going to start the long and painful yes. journey of forging out that sword. Maybe yeah. it'll be done in like 10 years or so. And this will be like a 300 part Ten video. Months. 10 months. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, but it's going to be spectacular. I cannot wait to see that. You guys are going to capture that footage and we'll be sharing that on the Coal Ironworks channel, which you're probably watching it here on the Coal Ironworks YouTube channel right now. So thank you. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do. I think I think Professor Tolkien, despite his curmudgeonness of technology, would appreciate a banister canister of Bingo Finn's sketch that he doodled. I don't think he would have ever assumed that a couple random bladesmiths in the middle of Colorado would be forging this. So we did it. I'm stoked. And I can't wait to see it finished, guys. Three, two, two one. one. Super honored and stoked to have worked with you guys.